Measurement of Blood Pressure First make the instrument ready for measuring the blood pressure. You should have stethoscope, an appropriately sized blood pressure cuff, and mercury columns figmomanometer or an automated device with a manual inflate mode. Make the patient relax for at least 5 minutes. But if the patient has smoked or has done exercise then make the patient relax for at least 30 minutes. Make the patient sit with back straight and supported. Avoid factors that can increase blood pressure such as stress, smoking, exercise, cold temperatures, a full stomach, a full bladder, caffeine, and some medications. Remove excess clothing that might interfere with the BP cuff or constrict blood flow in the arm. Roll up the left sleeve for exposure of the upper arm. Rest the left forearm on the table. Position the left arm so that it rests at about heart level. Place your index and middle fingers over the center of the elbow in order to feel the pulse of the branchial artery. If you don't feel, then place the stethoscope and listen until you can hear the heartbeat. Wrap the BP cuff around the patient arm, about one inch above the bend of the elbow and should be evenly tight around the arm. It should let only two fingers to pass through the cuff. Place the stethoscope head under the cuff where you felt the pulse. Put the stethoscope earpiece in your ear. The earpieces should face forward and point toward the tip of your nose. The gauge needs to be positioned where you can see it. You can stuck the gauge in the cuff. Hold the pump in your right hand. Now inflate the cuff. But before you start, the valve needs to be closed completely. This will ensure that no air escapes as you pump, which would produce an inaccurate reading. Then rapidly pump the bulb to inflate the cuff. Keep pumping until the needle on the gauge reaches about 160 to 180 mm of Hg. The pressure from the cuff will occlude a large artery in the bicep, temporarily cutting off blood flow. Then slowly deflate the BP cuff by twisting the airflow valve in anti-clockwise direction. The pressure should fall at 2 to 3 mm of mercury per second, anything faster may likely result in an inaccurate measurement. Note the systolic blood pressure. The first occurrence of rhythmic sounds heard as blood begins to flow through the artery is the patient's systolic pressure. This may resemble a tapping noise at first. It represents the pressure your blood flow exerts on the walls of an artery after the heart beats or contracts. Continue to listen as the BP cuff pressure drops and the sounds fade. Eventually the hard thumping noises will turn into a whooshing sound. As soon as the whooshing noise subsides, you hear a silence. Note the reading when the rhythmic sounds stop. This is the diastolic blood pressure. It represents the pressure of the blood flow exerts on the walls of an artery, when the heart relaxes between the contractions. Now, interpreting the result is quite simple. Normally for the adult, the systolic pressure should be below 120 and diastolic should be below 80 mm of mercury. Let the cuff completely deflate. It is very important to double check the reading for the accuracy. After 5 to 10 minutes, follow the same steps to take another measurement. If your blood pressure is still high, consider comparing readings with the other arm. Take the reading of both arms and average the readings. Please like, comment, share and subscribe the video. For more information, visit my website, www.jyotsnapande.com.np. Details are given below. Thank you for watching.